Hi everybody, it's Rob Anderson again. I've now going to go into third video. My goodness, I've already forgotten. Yeah, pretty much the third video. And it's now you've got all your research done, you've done your, your production, you've tested it, you're now able to literally scale your business up and you're now fully in business. In fact, technically speaking, you are already in business because you've already made stock and sold some of it. But now you can kind of do it all properly. So coupled with, do I do part two, set up your online stream, run your production, and I split and test. Yeah, so basically from here, you go big in your production and your markets that you've already proved work. Yeah, so your sales, now you go big. But at the same time, you start setting up your online side. Okay, so it's a, it's a double thing that you do at the moment. Just to pre-warn you, and it's very sad to tell you this, that your online marketing will be quite a bit of work in the beginning. Thank goodness, you'll be pleased to know this. Once you, sorry, I'm going to sit still after this squeaking my chair. Once you've got past that initial three to six months of, of all that hard work of doing pages and posts and um, stock creation images and etc etc that you need on your websites and your online marketing social media blah 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 once you've done all of that it settles down to a rhythm of a rhythm and routine that it's probably 45 minutes to an hour max every day if you're doing a lot um, you could even get away with a few hours on a weekend at some point but what I wanted to tell you is you won't start to make money you'll be very lucky to get money within two weeks or orders or phone calls um, and that would come through local search, Google My Business. If you do that correctly, you can get um, results fairly quickly sometimes. Um, your video marketing can bring you results fairly quickly sometimes. Um, plus, if you've added your stuff onto places like Fulfillment by Amazon, FBA or Etsy or wherever, you could also get quick business there. But really speaking, it, the maturity of your website can be anything up to six months. So... Allow that from your third to your six months, it'll be before people Google starts with Google. Google starts to trust you that okay, fair enough, his website is now on 40 pages and he must be doing a lot of benches, bird feeders, it doesn't matter, you know, shoelaces. You can't make shoelaces out of wood. So you get what I'm going, is there's the, the market is there, okay? So and now that you know you've got your, what did I say, worked out, because you know what you're going to do. Now it's safe to set up your website, meaning you know you'll be able to do the correct keywords and the correct backing things. And okay, so one thing I've asked here is that check if you're local or not local at all. Okay, so if you're going to do local as well, it's all cool, but you're going to have an entire extra set of pages, maybe 20 extra pages. Each one of those pages focused on a modifier word. The modifier is your town or a suburb. So you will have 20 pages. Let's say you make benches. And I'm going to use Johannesburg and Santon where I live. So sorry if it's strange names. But I will put bench companies or bench suppliers in Morningside, bench suppliers in Kelvin, bench suppliers in Baclou. Every one of those is a page. And you don't quite just make it so boring, right? Um, best bench suppliers in Baclou. And then the next one is um, find a bench manufacturer in Morningside. Um, Google knows and understands what you want and doesn't want to see too many copy-paste looking things. Um, but every one of them needs a, to be a page if you want to get a reaction from it. And you might not get an order from that page for a year. But then you pick up three benches from a single order. Um, how cool was that for, for, for writing on a single page? Bargain. Okay, so local and not local is different. You want to maybe set up an entire shopping website and that's international because all you're making are wooden beads for, for jewelry and you wholesaling. Totally different kettle of fish. It's how you then settle ballpark. I've got no idea how I should call it. But it's it will help it'll need mean that you need to kind of set up your website slightly differently for each one of them. Um, by the way, that's the kind of thing that you can ask me for free. If you go where I'm on the now, you go all out. If you go to the links thing and you go to the Facebook group and join, if you email me, I'm going to give you a short answer. It's going to say, go join things to make and sell. Um, but if you join things to make and sell, I'll say, hi, Rob, I got your free report. Cool. Thanks for that. Um, I've got a question. I'm making wooden beads and I want to sell them to crafters. 
how do I go about it? And I'm going to give it a bit of thought. I'm going to do a bit of research for you. I'm going to come back and tell you that you've got to advertise on, um, on Etsy. Because all those millions of crafters are on there. Or better still, you've got to go to crafting websites themselves and pay to run ads on their sites. Or you've got to go to guys that are clearly making jewelry already and email them one by one. Or, or, or. So I'd set up this method of marketing and obviously you then build your website to say this is what I do, this is how. But you won't likely, if you're wholesaling wooden beads, I'm not sure if people are searching for it. But until you've asked me to research it for you, I don't know. So how you build your website, there's a bit of flexibility to it. Let me tell you this. Have I said it here? I have. It must be WordPress. Guys, don't believe the ponytailed university guys that have gone to a lot of trouble and spent a fortune learning how to code websites when the world has caught up and overtaken them about five years ago. Sorry to say, I keep bumping into them. I, I used to be able to do HTML. I've never done the pony, I've done a ponytail thing, my bad. I've never done the, the university degree on HTML. And I'm amused when they still stick by the fact that they think they really need it. The customers don't. You just need a, a, a high quality designed premium WordPress. I would give you a link to it and install it for you. Uh, I'd do a free version for you, a free installation. If you, It's down in the links below if you use my affiliate link. But make sure you do it. So remember, people judge a book by its cover. If they arrive at your website and it looks five years old, you know, like a 2008 website, or even worse, a 2005 website, they've already decided, oh, oh. But if they arrive and it's got this stunning hero image that they just think, oh, oh. Oh, and they call their husband over quick. Come look at this bench. This is exactly what I was telling you about. Pow, they've sold. People judge a book by a cover, a website by its impact. Okay, so that image, by the way, I keep telling my clients, it's still only 1% of how a website works. So I, I, it's, I understand that 1% is vitally important. You get it wrong and, it's, and, and you, you, your business is in trouble. But it's easy to get right. And then the rest of it is SEO and this stuff. Setting up the plugins, doing core content pages, doing local search pages. Um, these are the door ones I was saying. Not door, the local search. This is a modifier. Your town or suburb. It's called a modifier. So Google looks for that modifier. And if somebody's in Milford or even, they don't even, if they just look up custom doors, but they're in Milford, wherever Milford is, by the way. Hope it's a town. If they're living in Milford and they're looking for custom doors, Google already knows. Google's sneaky. Google knows hell exactly you know how old you are and, and all of that. So Google will immediately send you the, your custom doors Milford page because you're in Milford. Sorry about the neighbors alarm people. Yeah, this is Africa. We have a lot of drama with alarms and things. It's part of how we live. <clears throat> okay, so I'm not going to go. This this can be a 20, hell, it can be a 300-hour video. SEO, core content, things, etc. I do tell you how to do it, okay? Let me see what I've said here. Plan your SEO. This would also include option. Are you going to do it yourself and pay for it? Yeah. Look, back to the $3,000. I'd do it all for you. Uh, I'm going to still make you write all the pages. And I can tell you now, it's the nasty, hardest part. Actually, I might not. Um, you pay me enough money, I'll get other people to write the pages. I'm not going to write them for you. But the content, the images, it's all vitally important. So um, there's things like this, IFTT accounts and things. It's all SEO. Sorry to make it look a little bit gobbledygooky in here. But this is very, very important as to how your website will work or not work, okay? Um... Incidentally, I think I said, yeah, if you plan to buy your traffic, contact me for a few links. I'll simply send you to a course. Affiliate links. Don't feel shy. I'll do that. Um, well, don't be scared. I'm going to send them to you, affiliate links. But it'll show you, send you two courses at not, you know, $2,000. That will teach you how to buy your traffic safely. Um, because in all... Paying for leads, um, there's always a little bit of a learning curve, but you don't want it to be a nasty learning curve that you don't make any money for six months. You want your learning curve to last three weeks um, where you lose a little bit and you break even a little bit and you're in profit almost immediately. Okay, I think these days, incidentally, I've been a huge 
advocate. Is that the right word? Okay, let's go with that. I've really, really insisted that organic search is by far the best way to go. And now I'm split three ways. I say that don't give up on your organic search. Just do it, um, but back it up with paid traffic in certain I buy traffic um, and go with a third option um, that I haven't covered in here just yet. I will probably will sooner or later. And that's social media here. Set up your social media. This IFTTT thing is also via social media. There are ways of doing social media without just doing really, really boring selling in your face bam banners on Facebook. I don't know why people do that. They still love to do it. On my group, 90% of the people that have joined me didn't join for the right reasons. They saw the word sell in my Facebook group and thought, oh, I want to join. And I look and they belong to 200 groups. What the hell are they doing on 200 groups? I know what they're doing. They're dropping in their advert day after day after day and thinking it'll work. No, it won't. So there's ways of doing it social media right and ways of doing it really badly wrong. Um, let me tell you about a guy on Instagram. He's got a one-year-old site um, selling watches and he's turning over a million dollars a month in less than a year. He did it right. Show the right pictures, impress people, do it the right way. Don't put banner ads. Don't put, you know, a picture and a price. No. Put stuff up like, you know, is this wooden watch better than the, the see-through watch? People want to comment on that. Hey, wooden ones are far better, sir. Well, okay, I'd say that. Glass, um, whatever. Okay, so, again, I can't go into too much in this here. Well, I can, but it'll just confuse you even worse. If you're going to be selling on Etsy and FBA, and FBA fulfillment by Amazon and eBay, it's all cool. Um, don't just do it, by the way. I suggest, again, you come to my Facebook group. Here's the link. Down here. Join the Facebook group and then say, Rob, okay, I've set up my website. I've followed what you've done. I've been to your other website. I've done the training. And um, by the way, you did install my, my free website. Thank you. And blah, blah, blah. But now I want to start selling on Etsy or eBay or FBA, whatever. Tell me whether. And I'll go and look at your site and look at the product and say, Phew. wow, okay, it's not going to sell on Etsy or it is or it is or FBA is going to be by far your best or make a separate drop, drop shipping site just for those XYZs that you're making. Um, you know, let me, let me try and explain. If you're making kids' toys, um, they're going to sell, but not so great on Etsy, but they're going to sell on Amazon. And they're going to sell even better. Okay, Amazon, they're always going to sell. You're going to do $100,000 a month if you're not careful. So that's good, I think. You're going to understand that's good. But... I know of a guy who was so pleased that he was turning over $100,000 a month on, on Amazon, on FBA. And he went to his wholesaler. He wasn't even manufacturing the stuff. And he went to his wholesaler one day. This is a true story. And it's, it's not me. It's, it's a massive online marketer guy. Very well known. I went to, In fact, I've forgotten his name, so I can't even tell you. Um, anyway, he then went to his wholesaler one day. And, the, and, and he was so pleased himself. I'm a hot shot here. And the wholesaler said to him, hey why are you selling so little and the guy said huh and he showed him the books and the guys that were selling 10 times in other words a million dollars a month turnover were had their own drop shipping sites because they were then able to dominate those keywords for those products and they were doing literally 10 times more so it is the way it is there's lots of things this kind of advice i can only give you in a full detailed course uh, or to be honest in um a little bit of it for free. I'm not going to obviously give you miles and miles of stuff on the Facebook group. Okay. And some of it's covered in. Where's my free training one? Free WordPress, uh, small business opportunities. On the site, on the free training, a fair amount of the training is covered in there. So you can go in there and, 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 and get a fair amount of this all without having to come and ask me there because there are already videos done on it. I must have already 30, 40, 50 videos on there um, of this caliber telling you details that work. Um, on the, you can't, I suppose you could email me, but it's better to do it, ask this, is there a course for the best way to do email marketing? Is there, is there, is there, and I'll find out for you. Um, I've got tons of stuff, so I, or I know of the right stuff. It's what I do all day and I've done it for eight years, guys. So trust me on that. Okay. Streamline your production. This is something that I can't even tell you how, well, you'd know. I mean, I don't have to tell you how important it is. Um, 
small little things, you know, mass producing, adding or removing that extra, I've got no idea, sanding or oiling method, um, things that, like I said earlier, going from the three to two to the one seater, switching from pole furniture to, to pine furniture. There are so many little things that you can do by thinking as you go and keeping notes, you know, that when you work with hardwood, you using up your consumables. In other words, your, your drill bits, your, your sandpaper, etc., are using, being used up twice as fast. It might not have been something, sorry about all the Facebook notifications, guys. It might not have been something that you had profited in or, or allowed for, or factored in. Um, you were factored it in for a softwood and now you're using up three times the amount of whatever it is, um, sharpening things. So work it on it all very, very carefully. And especially when you're getting a product that's selling well, mass produce it straight away, literally. Um, there were certain products that I made in my business that when you made 111, actually it wasn't profitable. Uh, uh, even if I made them flat out, I could only make four sets uh, in the factory size I had. Uh, uh, by the way, my factory was a home business, working from my garage, a single garage for that matter, with two full-time staff and myself, okay? Now, working on that, we could only produce an entire patio set, which was a server, coffee table, three-seater, two-seater, one-seater. Um, I think that was all. Maybe some side tables I've forgotten. We could pretty much only produce one of those a week. And the profit in it um, was not enough for me to, to, to earn a living. So, but if I had have taken a win, uh, I did, and, and literally make 40 of the one-seaters in one shot, um, a huge difference because now you, well, it, it almost goes, I'm not joking, like something like five times faster. So it could turn my turn. It is just a matter of capital outlay. So all things you need to consider. Okay. Look at your best-selling items and see if you can't duplicate it in a different way, um, making it look or, or seem like a different product, but basically enhance your product sales. Oh, another thing, this is in one of my courses, or this is my flea market, how to sell on the flea markets course. This is a really cool bit of advice. If your benches are selling very well at, let's just pick a number out of my head, $200, right? 2000 well, that'll be expensive. So it doesn't matter, $200 and you're selling them by the dozen like cornflakes. I can tell you a little trick on how to sell them faster. Uh, I don't know if it's twice as fast, but but 50% better, not double. And here's what you do. Do the same bench, but with a lot of inlay work, wrought iron work, um, carvings, stuff that clearly took a lot of time and is beautiful. But And then you put that bench up on a stand um, in the best featured display and people say, wow, and how much for that one? And you say, that one's um, $800. And they're like, pardon? And you say, and then say, for one? And you say, yeah, $800. But look, it's got all this hand carving and all this wrought iron and those inlays and, and that, just that little daisy carved in there, four hours work, sorry. And then they say, whew, $800. And this bench? And you say, $200. And in their heads, they're thinking, whew, that's better. I can afford that. In other words, it helps confirm that their choice that they would have made anyway, buying the normal bench that you've got lots of stock of, um, and you're going to get more sales of the 200 because suddenly the $200 doesn't seem like the most expensive. In fact, it looks like a bargain compared to the um, $800 hand-carved one. And by the way, the good news is, is that if you put that price up silly high, the $800 one, every now and again, some guy with more money than brains is going to buy it from you. Um, sh I shouldn't say it like that, but yeah, the way it is, okay. So... I uh, kind of covered this ad trim, ad details, um, ad leather bits. Sometimes it works, a lot of the time it doesn't. Um, it's one of the things that I sometimes look back and think, I should have just stuck to that one that sold the best. But the problem was that I only found out it sold the best by doing hand car. I mean, the hammock chairs I made. I used to do hand painted fabrics, you know, with spirals and, and yin yangs painted, hand painted. People come along the hippie types, whoa, cool dude, but they didn't buy them. The ones that were done in leather at twice the price, the guy with the money would come along and look at the yin yang one and shake his head and say, how much is the leather one? And he's got the money and he'd say, okay, I'll take two of those, please. Can you deliver? Done. 
So yeah, take care, but at the same time, test, test all the time. Oh, look at that. I've gone straight to the next word. Oh, upsells, by the way. Always look to do packages where if somebody's starting to look at the benches, you say, look, look, I just, sir, sir, thank you. Um, wait, wait for him to tell you he's buying too, by the way. Don't throw in things to confuse him and then you bugger it up. So this is normal selling techniques. Waitley says, okay, I'm going to take one. Thanks. And you say to him, okay, cool. You get his details. Now he's relaxed in his decision it's made. Then you say to him, hey, look, just thinking, do you want the cushions with it or not? And it's so easy for them to say, cool. It's just like your, your, your McDonald's. Uh, do you want fries or that, sir? You didn't go there to buy fries. You wanted the Big Mac. Oh, sorry, I don't know if I'm mixing up the, the, the takeout places. But you go there. Can I get two Big Macs? And then they say, do you want fries or that? And you think, ah, yeah, whatever. Throw it in. Helen, you're paying the earth for those fries, guys. But it's the way it is. It's an upsell. Okay. We're on 21 minutes for this video, so I'm going to hurry. I'm going to go and come back and do a last video for this one. So let's just say the analyze and split testing. Uh, it's just normal business, common business sense. Um, if you're running the right websites with the right plugins and things, um, you can see what people are doing and why they're doing it on your website. You can see which pages they're going to, what they're clicking, where they're sharing. Um, keep an eye on it. And... If your Pinterest starts to work very well, then push Pinterest harder. If Facebook is working better, then double your efforts there. It's an incredible amount of free marketing that you can get that, that is so worth it, guys. I promise you. Okay, I'm going to finish this one and come back with how I can help you, what else I can do for you. Thanks. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.